if everybody is here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for waiting, those of you who had to wait while we had our executive session from 6.30 to 7. Um, <clears throat> guests, welcome. Um, administrators, leadership team, welcome. Um, guests against the wall. Uh, there are chairs here if it's more comfortable, but just be wherever you want to be. Um, and especially a welcome to our new student representatives, sort of all of you in one case. Um, Mia Smith and Towns de Groot. Uh, we're very happy to be here. And if ever you think of any way that this can be a better and more valuable experience for you, we want to hear about it. Okay. okay. Thanks so much for having us. Of course. It's a pleasure. All right. So, um, 1.2 Agenda Revisions. We've already knocked off 5.1 Superintendent Search Consultant. So, that is done. Um, are there any other Agenda Revisions? I would like to address a public comment we've gotten by email and I've had in person about the VSBA from our last meeting. I think that should be discussed during our meeting. Okay. Can you speak up? We can't hear. I'd like to discuss the VSBA from last time because I've had people talk to me personally and we've had emails that only went to the board and I think the public needs to be aware of what that was and that our vote last time was 4-4 four, four, and 1 uh, uh, abstention. abstention, could be the word. Um, so I think that needs to be added to our agenda. Uh, it, it sounds as though it comes under public comments, yes? No, I don't know that that's why they're here. As a board member, I feel it should be something we as a board are discussing because it was 4-4. Four, four. And now I've had feedback from the article in the paper, and it's been pretty strong feedback. And as a board member, before this was a unified board, I rarely had anyone contact me. So I think it should be something we readdress. So you want this as a discussion item, uh, VSBA, um, after Dues. that, or something? Yeah, dues, payment by our supervisor union. Okay, discussion. I just want to be clear what, what it is that... I, I would like a re-vote. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's a different thing. And that could not actually be on this agenda because um, it's not warned. Um, we're still... We're well, still I looked in Robert's rules and said it could. So, um, you just need us at, at two-thirds of the board mm -hmm. members to reconsider the motion. Laura, we can't hear what you're saying. We need two thirds of the board to reconsider the motion to discuss. Okay, um, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm so dense. I, I have to ask you to bear with me. Um, I, I, there is reconsidering a motion or reconsidering, yeah, reconsidering a motion. But um, my understanding, and I would defer to others who have better knowledge of parliamentary procedure than I. Reconsidering a motion can only be done in the same session that the vote took place. The, in, a, in a different session, what you would do is to renew the motion. Okay. Um, renew the motion. So you're, what you're proposing is to renew the motion. Yes. Okay. That's what I have to say in order for it to be parliamentary. Then that's the language I'll use. Renew the That's motion. my understanding. And once again, I, I, I'm ready to be corrected by anyone who knows better. Okay. Lindy has moved to renew the motion, and the motion in question is to pay <coughs> VSBA dues for the 2019 2020 school year. Okay. Lindy has moved this. Now, um, I, 
as chair, am going to make the ruling that this motion is out of order because it's finished business. That a vote took place um, and the motion failed to carry. So at this point, um, what you would do, and again, um, if you want to challenge that ruling, what you would do is um, move to appeal the ruling. And once again, um, Michael, you're, you're a town moderator, so if you, um, if you have any comments or, um, or advice, if, I, if any of this sounds wrong to you, um, please, I would invite you to let me know. Um, um, sure. Uh, if it's going to be binding, then I think it has to be warned. Right. Well, um, at this point, we'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that part. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think you can take a binding vote tonight without putting on a warning for a future a gender item so that people would know that that's coming up for a binding vote. Did okay. you say binding or non-binding? Binding. binding. In, in order for it to be binding, it has to be warned. Has to be warned. Okay. Your motion last year, last motion required a binding. Yes. 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 And the motion that was initiated the postponement of the payment of the dues uh, indicated that the article had to be on a warned item on the agenda. So. Uh, Based upon that alone, I believe it would have to be warned at a future meeting for a vote. Right, okay. Um, so it would have to be warned, if it comes to pass, it would have to be warned on a future agenda for a vote. Okay, so I have ruled the motion out of order. And we're just talking about what recourse if you don't like that ruling. I don't. Okay. Um, <laughs> Out of order for this meeting, or out of order for the future? At all. Out of order for this meeting. Well, there's no, um, sorry, out of order at all. It's finished business, thank you. Okay, just yeah. Pardon, yeah. Pardon. pardon me. Um, so, anyway. So is it true then a two-thirds vote could overrule your decision? I, I, That's think, I think it's a, it's a two and here, it, it, for an appeal, I thought it was a majority vote can overrule an appeal. So my question is that the motion can be raised at a separate meeting um, on its face without having a two-thirds majority. Um, is the motion fails, it can be renewed at a, not renewed, just represented um, at a subsequent meeting. And I don't think it needs to go That's what I read when I was that, looking at it. You know, yeah. Being stick with the processor. Because um, I think I did remember a truncated version of Rod Patrols, and that's what I thought I read is that when you were right about three considerations different than what Brilliant. you're talking about. <coughs> right about the yeah, well, majority. Majority. But it's, yeah, we can, we can, we, I guess the question I have, Scott, is that we had um, a meeting for setting our agenda. And at the meeting that we had for setting up the agenda, I was not allowed to be able to use, to say you were going to use your priorities or your power of the chair to at the meeting, not in there, it, not let it go through. But because it was business that was that, that we wanted to, to have, we didn't need to warn it. So we, we had the ability, when, so so you're like doing a double negative? Mm -hmm. So at the planning meeting, so I'm a little confused. And I'm okay. not part of the Can I, there. Let, me, let me walk you through what I have in mind, and you tell me if it, if it doesn't work. My understanding is that you may appeal my decision, my ruling, this motion out of order. That appeal can overturn my ruling by a majority vote, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're Robert I'm looking at Robert's rules. Well, no. Um, I can't really tell you because I'm looking at Robert's rules for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this word is. 
Yeah. Um, when a uh, chair or moderator on the floor makes a ruling on the floor and there's a motion and a second to override the chair, that motion can carry by a majority vote. Okay, thank you. So we're good. All right. Um, we're clear on that. So if you overrule me, then there would be a second vote on Lindy's motion. Um, and then if that passes, it will go on the agenda warned for our next meeting. Okay? Does that does that make sense to everybody? That's my understanding. Well, I actually don't think there has to be a vote on Lindy's motion. I mean, she just asked that it be on the agenda for the next time, right. and, and and we vote then. I don't think. It, but she needs group permission. I mean, I think we need to if you we need to vote to overrule your decision. That's the first step. But I don't think we need a second vote to say now, Lindy, you can make your motion. Right, because um, it would just be on the agenda. Yeah. Right. For the next meeting. Okay. So um, would that be acceptable to everybody? I don't agree. You don't agree? I, I think if, if he's overruled, there still needs to be, well, I guess, perhaps not. Perhaps, um, my, my guess would be that when he makes a motion to put it on the <coughs> agenda, and we can vote on that. But just, I, what I don't understand is, things that are on the next agenda, we don't make motions at this meeting. There's a little committee that makes an agenda, so I shared my yep. pleasure that I would like it on the next agenda, basically, I guess. Uh, it, it, it does seem to me to imply that if you vote to overrule my, my uh, to overturn my ruling, then basically the same people would vote That's the right. same way. Right. So it would just be, you know, um, redundant. For George, yes. Well, but but whatever way he votes, we'll, would stay the same. And we don't. Yeah, he would stay the same in the second. And vote. There is no harm in taking a second vote out of overabundance of caution for the process. <laughs> okay, we'll go with the overabundance of caution. Let's do that. Okay. So what, what is it we're doing? Two votes. We're going to do two, gonna two votes. Do I think we should do two votes yeah. just okay. to be sure we're doing it right. Now. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Go by vote and just say what the vote is. Well, I think I make a motion yeah. to yeah. overrule Scott's. My ruling. Right. To yeah, I appeal. appeal my ruling. Right. Okay, it needs a second. I will second that. Okay, very good. Now, um, again, as I understand it, because I also read Robert's Rules for Dummies. Um, the chair, in a case, in, in an instance like this, gets to speak first and gets to speak last. So um, I will take advantage of that, of that privilege. And um, just to say, are you sure you want to do this? Whatever happened to all that stuff about setting us back, about re-litigating old issues, about you know having more important things to do than continually go around in circles on these things. Um, from my perspective, once a motion is laid to rest, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a motion that I would have liked to see passed, a motion laid to rest should stay at rest, unless you know there is some material change in the basis for this meeting. Um, for example, if there's some new information that puts everything in a different light, or uh, the situation changes and, and uh, renders the decision you know, null in some way. Um, <clears throat> in that case, that makes complete sense to me. Um, because we have this procedural uh, route to, you know, bring a motion back from the dead. Um, I, I think, you know, I honor that, and I, I think it's important, and we may have reason to return to that procedure in future. But, um, but I think 
we just have to be very careful about um, what we wish for in this case. So, um, who else wants to go? Mindy, you made the motion. Well, I think what you just said is um, a little bit funny, thinking of the last five years, but, um, and how many things were revisited. This is one instance where I have had several contacts from not just people in East Montpelier, we represent all five towns, saying, what were you thinking for $7,000? You're throwing out an awful lot of resources that have been valuable to the schools and to us for a very little part of our budget over one issue. And I want to respect the people who reach out to me and the way I'm respecting them is for us to discuss it again. I also think that last time the 4-4 vote, quite often a chairperson is to break a tie. That's not exactly how it was used. But um, so I wanted to revisit it. I did not feel comfortable when I left, and then when people contacted me, I did not feel comfortable that I wasn't representing them. And my job is to represent people. I, I'm disappointed that I had a heads up that this was coming from the community. Um, I was contacted to not reopen this motion. I um, voted to support the VSBA. I don't think we made the right decision, um, but I, I don't know what opening it again is going to accomplish. I do agree with you and appreciate the round circle for five years. I, I hear what you're saying and I, I agree with you. But it, at some point, we just need to move forward. And when I asked at our last meeting, is this forever? Is this this year? Scott, you're very clear that this is for this year. I, I don't think we made the right decision, but I, I feel like in my heart, I just, I want to move forward. They want what? I missed your last Just move forward. So I am, first, think that the chair can vote whenever they want to vote. I don't think they should be deprived of the vote of a vote on any motion and not just in a tie. Because uh, that, that's just saying by taking on the burden of being a chair, you're deprived of a vote, and, and that, that shouldn't be. Um, I do think the process should be followed, uh, that if there's going to be another vote, we, and it moves a lot more, we do it, um, provided there's enough momentum for it. Um, I would also, I, I actually don't like hearing this community member or that community member said this or that without seeing the substance. I would hope that we would share, we have the we emails. share emails and things like that that any of us get or any politicking that's going on behind the scenes before that we have an open and honest discussion in, in uh, service of transparency, including whether the BSBA or church representatives have contacted any of us to bring up this motion. Uh, because that would be, you know, I'd rather have that on the floor for discussion. And just often, I'm not saying that that has happened. I don't know that it happened, has happened, but in terms of uh, um, transparency. So I, I would, actually, it's not sorry to say this, but I'm going to vote to overrule your ruling um, and welcome for more, uh, another robust discussion um, if it is moved again. Um, so I just, just for the process, because you know, we all, will be setting precedent that vote is not a vote because we can vote up over and over and over again and as long as you get a second, you can get another vote. Yes, yes you are. Um, we are establishing that because if it's done here, why not do it in other situations? I mean, that's just, you know, it's kind of like Bush versus Gore for only this decision. Uh, we may create this one principle uh, but that principle is actually taken on a lot of its own. So it, we will be sending precedent and just let's go with that open eye and not quibble about it when it comes up again in the future. Without saying, oh wait, we shouldn't be doing that because we are doing it. So, so, so. Chris, do I remember correctly that you have active litigation against the SBA? That you, you do. 
and that that this board, or at least that I learned of it during the discussion at the last meeting. Yep. Yeah. So I would I, I would ask that in the also in the interest of transparency, that actions like that are shared beforehand. Um, I actually did mention it during our discussion. I did it as an individual, mm -hmm. certainly not representing the board, um, and I did it to uh, obtain information, which the VSBA has refused to provide, and uh, hopefully. It will, this litigation will establish that the BSBA is a quasi-public entity that needs to comply with the uh, public documents law. If that's, that, that's, the, that's the goal. And I'm happy, to, anyone here, I'm happy to share copies of the complaint sure. uh, and the attachments that went with the complaint. And I received a uh, motion for summary judgment from the BSBA tonight. And I'm happy to share that. That's, that's great. Right. Right. So, made what? Or Mr. A motion for summary judgment. That's great. So if, if that's sufficient for transparency, talking about these things and announcing them in the meeting, I think Lindy's, you know, delivery of the information that she's received, you know, emails from the public should be sufficient enough to, you know, serve anyone's interests of transparency. Okay. And in the interest of transparency, I'll say that Jael and I received an email from a community member here in Worcester today um, asking that we revisit uh, this question as well from Paul Hanlon. So, in the interest of transparency. Sure. Thank you. Um, I think um, I, I missed a lot of what you said, Chris, but one of the things that I did get from it that if we are constantly revisiting issues that seem to be finalized, we're not going to get very far. Um, and I, I, I feel as, as Scott did, that we're just going on and on about basically Act 46, which both Ecor and Lindy have complained that we are still fighting Act 46. We are not. We are here together. I've, I've done several inquiries trying to figure out how to get the schools more working together. Um, I. I wanted to, I did not. I realized when I was thinking about going to the Calus, get back to school, barbecue, whatever they had, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, it's like, well, I shouldn't limit myself to Calus, I should be going to all the schools. And I didn't get to any of them because I have commitments at home I have to deal with, and I can't always just jump in the car and take off. But um, I, I, I have been working very hard personally in my own, in getting my own mind together, that we are board taking care of five elementary schools and high school. And we want all those kids to excel. We want our teachers to be comfortable. We want our leadership people to be comfortable. And to constantly revisit a, a, a problem is not helping us get calmed down and straight ahead and move forward with the things we really need, excuse me, we really need to do. And I really would frown <coughs> on revisiting this at another time. And I would not, um, I would not vote to, um, it depends on what the motion is about of repealing Scott's uh, decision. I agree with Dorothy 100%. <coughs> um, being a, a two month old new entity, um, is there any harm in just walking away from the BSBA for one year and then coming back and revisiting um, and pushing all of this behind us because we know that there are so many things that we need to do um, and we now have 10 instead of 30 people to do those things um, so I would rather not revisit this I'd rather move forward you know, I, I gotta say that you know, the key responsibility for our new board, like one of the, the, the previous board members that have been here, is to, you know, if they're not.
responsibility of the new board is to adopt new policies for governance and operations, all of which must be very careful written to avoid snares with the attorneys and to comply with federal law and local law. We have our policies from the, the prior year. The policies have been revisited because they are three years old. All new policies that have been announced, we won't have. So all the policies that would align with federal law, we would have to, not federal law, but state law, we would have to hire ourselves. So if the decision, I just want to question the, the not revisiting this on behalf of Factor 6, because the decision was made on behalf of Factor 6. That was the last, the, the garage that we had. But it's not because we don't believe that we should be part of an organization that that their mission and mission is to support public education. It's not because we don't believe that uh, this organization has helped us with policy. It's not because we don't believe that this organization gave us training this summer. So it, we voted because of that 36. So, it, and then it, it just, you know, from the that. And then lastly, we are, we are gonna embark in finding, uh, you know, a future superintendent for our district, finding a superintendent for our district. And it does say uh, a lot from, from, from ourselves, the decision that, that we're making. So I, I think we got enough information, enough people. Everybody that kept contacting me, I'm like, send an email, because it doesn't matter, I'm part of an organization, it doesn't matter what I say, please make sure that you're reaching out to, to, to everybody. So I think it's a, it, at a time where we're gonna need more help rather than less help, at a time that we wanna be more involved in policy in, in the state, it would be a mistake for us not to revisit a failed motion. So that's just one question. What, for those that did vote against it, what is the plan to vet our policies? How do we pay for that? We have, I believe, during the course of um, the board organization and planning, the opportunity to hear from the policy committee that we formed um, last time. It won't be meeting until Monday. It won't be meeting until Monday. Yeah. We but were unable to find a suitable date until then. May we put this question to them in somewhere in our, is there a place to put that in to, or not even next meeting, but even um, just as part of some of our discussion? Like a board will monitoring schedule, maybe? Okay. So how long do we have to develop policy? A year. A year from well, 30. What? Yeah. We don't have more policies? Yeah. So we, we adopted policies for the sunset. Right. Okay. So we adopted <coughs> policies um, that the previous from Correct. Before, and we gave it sunset for a year um, and then to re it. Right. Um, and so the policy committee anticipates is going to go through the policies um, and you know, make recommendations to uh, the, the board as a whole as to have that modified or, or not. So, right. and, and I will say we don't have, we don't have talked about what? We don't have all the policies. Right. Yeah. And I, if I could add, because I was the policy chair before we unified with people from each yes. board. A little bit. I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, remember that we're talking about the appeal and we're not actually- That's why I'm appealing. Because right. I'm concerned about policy. Okay, okay. Not about Act 46. That's why people didn't want to be in VSBA. I'm concerned about our representation, model policies. We got them from VSBA when we were doing the new ones. We have to have all this done in a year and they have them vetted. Their language is such that a principal is not going to get sued because a policy was loosey-goosey. That's my concern. That's why I voted to be with the SBA. So to say I voted because of Act 46, or no, it's because mainly for me, that's what I know they're really good at. They also are very good at board training. And I appreciated the board training I learned a lot from both the original one and the refresher one. I feel it's a very good organization to help us in a way that is vetted and we're not spending legal fees to have somebody else vet policy. Um, I voted against 
um, joining, um, mainly because I didn't have institutional knowledge of the situation, but I found it very disturbing that they weren't willing to share information with Chris, I believe, wholeheartedly in transportation and trans, um, sorry, thank you, <laughs> transparency. And um, if this organization is going to be advising us on policies, I believe that they need to have um, fundamentally a practice of transparency. And um, I know you mentioned that there are other organizations that could help us. And my hope is to see that the BSBA behaves differently over the year, and then I would wholeheartedly support them if I feel like they will be more transparent and give us you know, you know, I wanted to also see what was going to take place um, between Chris and the BSBA um, before I needed a vote. Just I noticed that we're sort of drifting into a discussion on the motion instead of the motion. Um, but Dorothy? Um, Lost my train of thought. You interrupted there. Uh, uh, or, well, I, I may even not be on, on the appeal thing, but um, it'll come back. Okay. I just kept it over there. I'm at this point. That's okay. Point of information. Yes. Um, the, the VSBA, I think, sells its services. You yeah, that's what I was going to say. You don't have to be a member. We can buy those services. services. Um, get the services in there, right? Yeah, you just pay extra. The policies there are not. It's about double say. for double. It's about double for services that they charge for, but there are also free services. We do get our policies reviewed for free as a member, but if we want them to develop a policy for us, then there's a fee associated with that, is my understanding. Okay, so the model policies that they've already developed are available for sale? No, they're built for members. I'm talking about other yeah. yeah. members. If you create a policy and you'd like them to get it, that would be something. I okay. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Um, once again, we're, we're we're drifting into the into the motion instead of the appeal. I'd like to concentrate on the appeal. Is there anything more that anybody has to say about the appeal? I, I just want to make a point of order that it is it is not fair that we just get that one explanation from Chris on what is going on with the transparency or the communication with the CA because there's more communication and some emails went went through, but that should be clarified a little bit. And I know that it's not for this point, so I'll respect what you're saying, but it is not complete information. I guess that's, I would go to Phil Scott's ruling um, and vote again after more information is presented. I didn't feel comfortable in supporting an organization because of the lack of information. Um, so, um, has everybody, does everybody feel they've had a, a chance to speak about the appeal? In which case, I get to um, wrap it up and just say, um, I, it's very interesting that there's such a misconception that the vote was because of Act 46. And maybe that's an argument in favor of having the debate again um, as much as I think um, it's not a great idea, but, um, but that's up to you to decide. And if you're ready for a vote, okay. Um, in, in this particular case, Rick, I'm, I'm sorry, what we're going to do, this is a procedural vote, so, um, and because it's right before public comments, I'm going to take the procedural vote and then, um, if there are no more agenda revisions, we'll, we'll go straight to public comment. Does that sound okay? Thanks. So, um, the motion is to appeal my ruling that renewing the motion to vote on the SBA dues is not a good word. Got that? So, we're voting to take an appeal. You're voting to overturn my ruling that Lindy's motion is out of order. Very clear, I hope. Okay. All in favor of overturning my ruling, of, in, in other words, all in favor of the appeal, please say aye. Aye. aye.
All opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay, I'm gonna have to go take names. Um, or, or show of hands. All in favor, please say aye. Okay, Lord, Chris, Jonas, Lindy. All opposed, say nay. Scott, Marilyn, George, Jael, Dorothy. So, um, the appeal fails. Okay, um, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, if, if, and we'll find some way to accommodate concerns that emerge over the course of this in case um, that becomes necessary. Very good, all right. Any other agenda revisions? All right, public comment, 1.3. Any public comment? Rick. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, Richard Nixon, he did a lot of good things in his presidency, and he only did maybe one really bad thing. By God, I tell you, you know, he should have been hung for what he did. And this issue goes way beyond Act 46. This was a betrayal of town interest. And to not take that with some seri you know, seriously, I mean, I would be really disappointed with this board. They're accountable. They are an association that's supposed to represent us as towns. And they arguably, you know, did damage to us. At least, you know, a few of the towns in this district, in the, all of them in the long term. But by stepping out, you are making a statement, and I, you're holding them accountable. And I would stay out until they proved that they are worthy of our membership, you know, and that they can be trusted. Change in leadership, whatever that is. And frankly, all these things, the policies, and particularly even the trainings, I would be worried. If they're doing things like this behind your back, I would be worried about trainings becoming indoctrination rather than training. You know, bias creeps in there. And if they get away with it, that bias will be pervasive and get worse and worse. You've, we've got to hold them accountable. I'm sorry, that sounds harsh. This goes way beyond Act 46 because it does go way beyond Act 46. This is our interest that they are supposed to be represented. These are professionals, and they are hired to do jobs. And yet, and we've got, they've got to remember who their taskmasters are, who they work for. So that, that I think, is important for this part to think about beyond procedural. And I know, I know you're a young board, and you're setting precedent in decision making. But set some precedent in ethic. You know, this is kind of ridiculous, in my opinion, looking at what's been done, and to shove that under the rug, because they offer a few policies, which we can get elsewhere. I mean, everybody's in this frenzy about being sued, and, well, you know, I'm sorry, there's a lot of good information out there that we can not have that. We've got good lawyers. If we make a mistake, I have a little bit more confidence in the system being a little bit more forgiving than that. This is a fear tactic. Now let's hold them accountable. Thank you. Um, anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Scott. Bruce. I don't really have any dog in this fight for the SBA, but I would ask that you guys revisit this precedent that you just set in terms of a chair having a veto on the agenda additions that you should have a policy in place. And I think what just happened probably wasn't fully correct. Thank you. Um, are there other public comments? <coughs> Shannon. Hi, all of you. <coughs> I want to thank you for the hard work that you've been doing. I especially want to thank you for all of the work that you've done this summer to build relationships with each other and to focus on the future and the positive and the possible. I didn't experience the last meeting, but my sense is that this debate has been really destructive to relationships and trust. That troubles me deeply. 
I see all of you as my, rep my representatives. As your constituent, my wish would be that you would really throw all of your heart and passion behind a vision that you love enough to fight for. This is such a distraction from that, and there's no time to waste. There's just no time to waste. So I've just felt really sad and disappointed by how I've seen this unfold. But I also want to just say that I feel inspired by the efforts that you've made to come together around a vision for our kids. And I really have a lot of faith that you'll be able to come back to that and orient around that. And that would be my ask, is stay focused on that. Thank you, Shani. And, and also, if I may, on behalf of the board, thank you for being willing to work on the negotiations committee with board members and Susanna uh, and Deborah. Um, it's an extremely important task, and um, I really think that you are the perfect person for it, <laughs> um, as you've just demonstrated. Alan. Um, I wanted to thank Dorothy for uh, putting information on her front porch forum about what's going on in the district and upcoming meetings, and I really wish that all the towns would do it. Um, I know Front Porch Forum isn't the end all and be all, but people read it. Um, and if you don't have information, you can't stay informed and you don't know what's going on. So thank you, Dorothy, for doing that. And I really wish the East Montpelier reps would do it. I'm not really sure why they don't. Um, I, I don't live in Callis, but I go to the Callis Front Porch Forum. Um, and um, I think it's a real necessary thing to do. You can't talk about community engagement if you really don't put forth an effort to engage the community. <coughs> Thank you. Um, any other public comments? Um, could I ask a question about the Front Porch Forum? Because my understanding is somehow we can put it in all five, or is it just that we can read all five? So I'm not understanding it. You can read all five. You, can, <coughs> you personally can do it in the community in which you live. But if there's something that you would like to put on that relates to the activities of the board or meetings, we can post that. We have one subscription in the central office to post that for all board, five. For all five. But um, otherwise, you have to be a resident in order to post it. So it seems to me as a board, we should have something that goes out that's the same for the community with the agenda. Um, I mean, Dorothy's kind of gave the highlights and the agenda, and I do think it's um, a good policy or procedure. It's not a policy; it's a procedure to have that on all the front porch forums. I'm not also, sure. Could, I think you can link on those forums. I'm mm -hmm. link people to the website where agendas and materials are. That's, always that's what I did. Yeah, you did that for me. But you also had it right there. You could read exactly. You wrote. Well, uh, it was a summary. Yeah. Yeah. Because before and uh, past um, months or whatever last year, when it would get posted the front porch forum, which was basically the same as we get on this piece of paper, it it was so long and involved that I think a lot of people just, oh yeah, they have a meeting and went mm -hmm. on about their business. And so I tried to make it as short as possible. And um, so that they would read some of it. David. Chris and I. Well, I'm with this guy, Mary Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> does a really nice summary for the middle size community, and, and I think it's a good response. Um, and she does that after every meeting, um, basically what happened, <clears throat> and, and then posts and when. Well, he bets it to make sure he agrees with it, and then we post it, and I post it on our middle sex family. So um, it's been good, and it's been good to collaborate. It, it does take some time, but I have gotten really positive feedback from community members um, that I was shocked that they did it, because as Chris can contest, I, I tend to go on and on. <laughs> but, but we are, we are doing it in the middle of Thank you. Um, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, David. 
Uh, Dave Lawrence from Middlesex. I just wanted to follow up because Mary Lynn mentioned our Middlesex families page, and she specifically means on Facebook. I don't know if other towns have something similar, but for people that aren't reading the Front Porch Forum, I, it's really good that it appears in both places for people to see, and I'm really grateful that she puts them there. Stephen? Scott, I would just offer that uh, the U32 board used to have a process by which it uh, disseminated the same information across all five towns, um, and so I mean, you might want to consider adopting that process again. It sounds like you already have, it was always difficult to find the people to write it, but you, it sounds like you have two writers already, but I wouldn't volunteer them. But, <laughs> but, uh, but just yeah. Oh, did I? That's a yeah. yeah. Because that seemed to work well for us at the U32 board, is that sharing of that one document. And we should have one voice. Yes. Well, I think it's, it's okay to have different voices. But not um, when it's about our, first, our meeting, I think. Yeah. I, I, I think if it's consistent, that's fine. Um, Rick? Yeah, I think, I think you should actually have a, a board wide discussion on things like forward uh, front porch front. But I do think <laughs> that each of the board, the individual town boards, should also present their interest. I mean, they're, you say we're unified all the time, and we are, we're trying to be, but always there are going to be conf conflicts with towns. There are going to be things that will be of particular interest to a Callis or a Worcester or a Middlesex, when they might not be to the others, and it, for a lot of reasons. So, and I think that will be lost if it is just the generic board decision which overrules that, that small voice. Important to have, you know, the local reps, you know, reach out to their towns and talk to those local and about local impacts. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't say this before. I'm Chani Watermouse from Worcester. I'll be brief. Jael and Jonas are my neighbors, but I voted for all of you. Every one of you represents me. Jael and Jonas don't represent me, and um, Chris and Mary Lynn represent Middlesex. You all represent me. I'm your constituent, and I, I think it's really, again, destructive to be thinking about some of you representing Callis, some of you representing Worcester. You all represent all of us. And uh, the, the advantage to what Stephen was talking about in 232, there was a core um, spiel after each meeting that uh, because every board member <coughs> posting to their town could have had the possibility to, you know, emphasize one thing or or uh, throw something else in that might be of of interest. If there was, for example, um, I don't know, some um, singer from a town who's in a who's in a musical that's showing, or whatever it might be. Um, but it was all basically uh, coordinated. And, and what Tommy said is true, there aren't individual town board members. Right, I mean that's, They're all that's, everybody's. Yeah. I'm happy to send you guys what I've been doing, if you want to look at it, and you feel like I am capturing the essence of what we're talking about, I'm fine to do it. If, if there's not comfort in that, then that's fine too. I, I think it's been fair. I don't think it's been biased, but I really want you guys to do it, and I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Deborah, um, who's a good angel sitting on my right shoulder, uh, is counseling me to advise you that we have to be careful about electronic meetings. Um, it, Maybe share what we do, what we produce. Yeah, but again, but but you, can't you can't get feedback. You can't, yeah, you can't get feedback. Right, right. I'm not right. outside so the So we discuss it next year. Right. So can we just appoint, like, or at the end of each meeting, even if we take turns, but or we could oh. just appoint Marilyn, right? let's say, you know, we have a, or we take a <laughs> not This is what, for sorry. For the first day. Yeah, sorry. Three months. <laughs> or for the session. For the quarter. I don't know, for the month of September to November, or so yeah, budget in season yeah. is you, or somebody oh, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, okay, that's that, And then, or at the end of the meeting, we decided that month might not be working for you, but just have one designated. 
I think if we, why don't we do this one? We should do this one? Sure. And then we'll, we'll revisit it next time. And um, thank you, Flora. Okay. And Marilyn. Yeah, sure. That's a good idea. Okay. That way good. it goes to all five towns. Yes. Okay. Um, this is a very valuable discussion. Um, what I'd like to do um, before we move on uh, is just mention two other public comments that I've heard, um, just to register them. One uh, request for easier access to board info on the site, on the website. Um, that seems to be a perennial concern. Um, and the second has to do with um, the district string education, or a district string instrument education program. Um, and that, I think, can be folded into a discussion, a more general discussion of music and the arts and the other sort of broad gauge um, approaches. And that's it um, for public comments, I hope. Right? Good. I have oh, one sorry. from uh, Gina Page and uh, forwarded to you guys and uh, yeah, a letter about the school lunch. We had addressed that yeah. previous lunch, but she just sent something about the price for the school lunch. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the tour and update that was supposed to be happening at 7 p.m. is now um, slightly delayed, but we're looking forward to it. This is always the highlight of our meetings. Good. All right, well, welcome to Doty. Uh, we're the smallest jewel in the crown, but we like to think we shine the brightest uh, because we have a wood gym floor. <laughs> Honestly, this is one of our, our pride and joys. So um, I was going to start with us going outside because, as you folks know, I'm uh, very excited about a capital project we're working on here with getting new siding and windows. And I was hoping to be able to show you just how needed it, it really is. Um, Dodie's a little bit of a diamond in the rough right now, but I was able to meet with um, Bill Ford and Lynn Sachana from Black River last week, and we're looking at some alternative materials. Uh, the custodian and I peeled, uh, it was super fun, I'm not gonna lie. We peeled the siding off parts of the building and uh, found a shocking lack of insulation on, on this end. As, you know, it, so anyway, it's a very timely project. And what I'm really excited about is first off, as we look at what are some of the new materials that we can use that are both less expensive to install, less expensive to maintain, um, and also more energy efficient, really hoping to bring some of the costs of running this building down. And then as I, yeah, I'm starting to get playground excited. So um, but we're not gonna be able to see the playground because it's a bit dark out there. But any of you guys who are my age might recognize some of the equipment that's out there because we played on it when, when we were young. So, so the whole playground idea is really exciting. Uh, otherwise, in terms of the facility, this week uh, I should have a locksmith coming who's going to rekey all of our exterior doors. One of the things, this, the things that happens, I think, in a very small school, it's very, you know, we have very porous walls with the community, but we need to be mindful of our students' privacy and our students' security. And to be perfectly honest, what I discovered is we sort of lost track of who has keys to the building and who doesn't. So we're going to rekey the building and then, you know, reassign everything and start from scratch. And also, as we walk around, you're going to have been on a doorknob kick. It's, it's, very, it's a very concrete problem. You're going to notice we still have some of the old-fashioned round doorknobs, which are not accessible, not, accessible, not, not good. Uh, so, and in terms of security, all of our doors lock on the outside with a key. So in the event of an actual emergency, um, a teacher would have to go outside into the hallway, lock the door with a key, and then come back inside, which uh, is exposing them to unnecessary risk. So after the outside doorknobs, after I 
played with all of those, we're going to replace all of the interior doorknobs so that they're all lever doorknobs and that they have the button on the inside so that they can lock. Um, I think that when you're new to a building, sometimes when there's so many things to figure out and learn, you look at the really obvious things and you say, well, I'm not really sure about a whole lot of things, but I can see that all my doorknobs are different. <laughs> so that's where that started. So this is our cafegematorium. Uh, we're gonna, you know, I have, I have multi-purpose rooms, so it's the cafeteria, it's the gymnasium, it's also the bleachers become our stage. Uh, so it's where we're able to get a lot of things done. So if you'll join me, we can go out this way. Social Emotional Learning Committee, and uh, I'm wondering uh, if there's been anything, any other movement, uh, if, if that has been developed in, in any other way, or is that not true? <laughs> you mean, can you explain that what you mean? Are you talking about the committee itself? Or? Yeah, I, I want to know, um, uh, you said you're still looking for representation. Uh, have you found significant representation? Uh, I know we have just recently reached out within the last few days, so I, I can't answer that, but we'll keep you informed okay, in the next future meeting. But we are hoping for broad representation from classroom teachers as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm interested too. That's great. Thanks. Um, any other questions? Okay, then um, let's move to the consent agenda, which is to approve the minutes of September 4. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of September 4? Floor moves, second. Okay. Marilyn seconds. Very good. Any um, any changes to the minutes? It looks good to everybody? Yep. Okay. So, ready for a vote then. All in favor of approving the minutes of September 4th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed? Good. Um, 4.0, finance, discussion and action. Um, within the package, you have some materials that I trust you will have had a chance to look at. We have Lori here to answer uh, any questions about anything that might be mysterious. Um, and Deborah is reminding me once again, thankfully, that Angel still speaks to me. Um, and 
The other one on the other side. <laughs> the other, I'm surrounded by angels. I guess I, I would have to be a little bit. But I will. <clears throat> so, sure. So, in the interest of time, we were going to have a Lori go through the numbers. We, But as a review of what we did, we had our first finance meeting to try to start working on budget for next year. But at this point, we just worked on the is this the format that we want to start seeing? Is this the same format that before we uh, change the type and it's a little bigger, a little easier to, to read where some of our very little input that we gave because the story was completely on top of it. Uh, there were a couple of, of things that I don't know if you guys were able to read in the in the minutes on page, uh, what was it, page, you have page uh, uh, 13. There, there's a, you know, a, step by step of what we did at that, at, at that, at that meeting. And uh, we, I, all I want to share is that Vera, uh, Scott, and myself were at the meeting, and Vera and I are going to take turns reporting back uh, for this particular meeting. We felt like the best if Lori, as we started to get familiar with the, with the numbers, would be best if, uh, if Lori reported on, on their numbers as they are. And at the end, we're going to have you know future future things that we want to include in the in the talks about budget and also set our public forum uh, dates for communicating with the community and try to weave those in into our, into our planning. Laurie, you have to my turn. Okay. Um, just a quick highlight. Um, the format that you're seeing in this report is the format that uh, the full um, WCSU board with all its members agreed to have as the format. It was decided at a meeting at Calis a couple years ago. So we've continued with the same format. It's a, we call it a living, breathing document that we can edit at any time. And one of the things that we were trying to come up with is um, how frequently would this report be updated? And the decision at the Finance Committee was quarterly. So we'll do another complete um, projection update in December. But for right now, um, what I wanted to touch on was what this report is. It's on page 11, and it's a fund balance report. And what a fund balance report is, is if you're in business, it's what you might call capital or retained earnings. It's the amount of money you would have if you closed your business today. It's just cash on hand. It's not inventory, infrastructure, or capital items. So this is kind of like a savings account. So the voters in this community has in the past given this board permission to utilize the fund balance and it has been a warned item at town meeting every year and we would expect that that would be a request you would continue with. So the first page on 11 is the operating budget fund balance and the top part talks about a transfer from reserve accounts. Those are the numbers that you saw at the last meeting in great detail in that report and that's what we're going to call your beginning balance at this time. The auditors are finishing up the report. I should have it in a few weeks as a draft. Um, after that, we've taken a look at the budget and done a very uh, brief update with regard to special ed staffing. And when you increase special ed staffing, currently you receive reimbursements. So because we've increased our paraeducators um, this year, we also have additional revenues of about 146,000, is what we're projecting. Um, based on the fact that we borrowed less money and we borrowed it in a different time frame, we're projecting um, less interest income and less expense. So the key on this report is a positive, is good news, it's an increase the fund balance, a negative is not bad news, but it's a decrease in fund balance. Um, that talks about the revenue. So the budget was $33,854,769. Um, the projected increase is 108906 for a total projection of $33,963,675. Does everyone, are you guys with me? Okay. Then the next section is on expenses. I'm not going to go through every detail. Um, the committee provided feedback on how to word things so that it was clear. So those are all the changes we're currently projecting for the first quarter of the year. Um, we're projecting to be spending beyond the voter approved budget by $76,203. 
And because of the offset in revenues, we're actually projecting fund balance would increase by $32,703 this year. There's still reserves. Um, the technology and the fiscal software are a reserve. It was at the beginning balance, but it's still restricted for that based on prior board actions. Um, there's also a reserve for retirement expense that was built into a school budget for this year. Tonight, you'll see a couple items on here that are pending board action. Um, I'm sure Dorothy will review those later. Deborah, excuse me, I called you Dorothy. Um, Deborah will review those later. Dorothy might, but Deborah will really know that. Um, so one of them is a staffing um, pending board action, and the other is a transfer to U32 Capital Fund, which um, do you want me to discuss it now, or do you want me to wait? I think we could discuss it now in our finance. Okay. Um, so basically at the end of the year, um, we had provided each board with a recommendation to reserve 2% fund balance and have the remaining fund balance when we close the books transfer to capital. The 32 board deferred that decision and, and did not complete that action. So they had left it up to this board to make that decision. So what the finance committee had me do was to calculate the exact amount that would have been transferred on June 30 had that 2% um, action happened. So we're recommending a transfer of $437,490. And if the board um, agrees with that, the projected fund balance would be $1,042,530. It's still above the 2% target, which we can talk about at a future finance committee meeting. Um, that was the operating budget. And the next page I'm gonna go through really briefly, um, which is on page 12. Um, the top section speaks to our grant funds. Um, we have almost $1.7 million coming in this year for grants that are restricted for particular purposes. Um, if we don't spend the money, sometimes we give it back and sometimes we are able to defer it for a future year. That's why it has a beginning balance of zero and an ending projected of zero. The second section is on capital funds, and again, you'll see here where we noted the beginning balances that you saw at your last meeting by entity. And you'll see um, under the area of revenues, something called interfund transfers. That's the sum of money that each school budget had earmarked for their capital fund this year. And you will see Worcester had zero, and it was because at the time they had expected they might be in what we call the penalty formula for taxation. So that was an area they had cut out of their budget this year. It previously had been in the DOE budget. And then you'll see the pending transfer that we're recommending of 437,490 um, to go into the U32 capital fund. Um, I'm not gonna go through all the subtotals, but at the end, U32's had quite a few um, expensive projects this year and they really do need this transfer in order to sustain a capital fund. If you do approve our recommendation at the end of the year, it's currently projecting 497, 707, but there is a list of over $200,000 of items that um, are requested to be done this year. And the bottom section speaks to the food programs and um, just the highlights are in the minutes. So I guess I'll pause at this point and take questions. The, the other, uh, the, the English language learner position is also uh, it's approval by the board. True, that's, it's in this projected spending plan based on student needs, a point three additional position. May I just ask board members, <clears throat> when you look at these, do you understand what's, do you feel comfortable that you understand what's going on or is a lot of this just sort of numbers swing, swimming before your eyes? It's um, definitely numbers to me, Scott. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it might be possible at some point for us to at least think about. Um, Lori, if you, I know budget season is going to be a horror show, but um, if there's a possibility to have little tutorials, um, including for student members, I would like for really every, every one of us to feel um, comfortable and confident working with these numbers? Um. Uh, sure. It, I don't know if, how much experience, the, well, I know we have some new board members and certainly our student members. Um, perhaps you could give us a little direction. 
direction, or we could focus on a certain aspect of the report at each time, so it's not to take too much of the agenda time. That would be yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm sort of, this is probably a future agenda. Maybe our finance committee could discuss what we're going to do. Yeah, we could, yeah. We, could, yeah. We, could, we could do that. And Lori has done trainings in the past, sure. so we can mm -hmm. go so through those. Grab, go through that. Yeah. We used to do it with the new board training, but this time we're we focused on budgets this year because it was such a new thing. And we were going to try to do it this year, but because they were budgeting differently, we couldn't use the mm -hmm. same information. Yeah. A glossary of terms. I mean, some of these terms, I don't know, I use different terms and budgets I do for my job. So, I don't know, like the, what you're talking about with DOE and the penalty, exactly with that. Oh, okay. You just said that very quickly, so. Okay. So um, when we go to do the budget this year, when we come to revenues, there are formulas that the state has that when a school might fall over these formulas, they would have to raise $2 in taxes for every dollar that they spend. Okay. And so um, DOE was projected to be in that scenario had there been a separate uh, budget and a separate tax. We can, we'll be going through it again in December because we'll look at it as an entire entity as well. So I think using part of these funds um, to address what those inequities are and taking a step toward it before we develop um, in our future budget uh, steps to deal with those. I think using this money um, to get a step, get a move on it uh, would be very helpful. And fulfilling what our, um, our pledge was in terms of creating equity across the district. So, was that a motion to amend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an explanation of it. Did you get all that? <laughs> I move to amend that we allocate $137,490 of this transfer into a special fund, a separate fund, to address <laughs> skill level inequities across the district this year as opposed to waiting for next year. Um, that motion will need a second. I second that. George seconds. Okay. So, um, to discuss the amendment, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, so the, this is a capital, but so we've been trying to be good about building our capital. This is that, uh, this was something that actually the U32 board uh, was an action that they were gonna take before, but they felt that they didn't have the authority because we were gonna be forming a new board. So this would be in essence doing the same thing that we did at our local boards mm -hmm. and transfer the 2%. So because the, as you can see, the balance of where we are in capital, we could have said that. So it's not like it's like extra money, it was money that was dedicated to capital. I'm all for what you're saying, but we're, we're gonna address that in other ways in our budget, but this is a, a capital need to be 
able to sort of bring the books to not read right now with all of the different uh, those funds have been committed. They, those funds have been committed, yes. And, you know, so, and maybe because we were in the finance committee, we got a little more information. But what I, what I remember from your discussion, too, and I think George and Scott should speak to this because they were both at the U32, and Stephen is right here, so he could give us his input. But this should, you know, this is not one of those that we can split up. Yeah, and that's um, my personal. I, I, I agree. Uh, this. U32 is actually in, in um, pretty serious need of, of beefing up its capital fund. This uh, may not, I mean, I don't know for sure, but it may not take us to where precisely we want to be. Um, we may need even to go deeper. Um, so what is the amount that we typically like to have in the U32 capital fund in order to, at this time, um, the annual appropriation had been half a million dollars. It was changed to 437 the year we put computers and technology in its own fund. Uh -huh. So that was the annual amount. I'm not saying it's the right amount. It was previously what was budgeted for. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Stephen, do you have any? Hey, I, I would just respectfully ask that we able to move over that fund, uh, the capital fund balance, the, that 437000 so that we can complete our capital projects that we need to do this, um, this year. Um, one of the things that I would just offer is that you, the reason, one, of, one of the reasons why the board at U32 chose not to move those funds over is because it was more than $437,000. I, if, I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact number, but it was it was, no, that was the exact number. I no, no, no. I mean, the total amount of money that U32 had in its fund balance was more than 437000 That's true. Um, and so um, the board felt like they should bring all of that money to this board um, because it was already the five towns money, right? And so, um, but I think what we're, we're asking now is so that we can finish our, our capital projects for the year. We do need some of that fund balance allocated to us. The remainder of that fund balance, though, that we brought is is going to remain as part of that larger one point or one million dollars in fund balance that you are then, as a board, able to to do with as you please. Our target that's in here was the six hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars as a contingency fund is is there, but the um, there's an additional three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars that would be available to support for any of those other issues that you might want to address. I would just hope that we can do what, use the 437,000 for our capital fund, complete those, and that the board look at the 365,000 above that threshold for for projects such as what you're talking about. Yeah, I agree with the consideration with our next meeting, I'm going to make a motion uh, that we do um, the same thing and charge the administration coming back and telling us what it, where the need is this year. Because um, it doesn't seem right for kids to wait a year while the budget process plays out. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. We still have a motion, and a uh, motion to amend pending. So we need to take care of that. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? Okay, all in favor of amending the motion in order to take out that portion of the capital fund transfer for the purposes that Chris described. Please say aye. All opposed? Nay. Okay. Nay. Okay. So um, did I get enough? Well, there was no aye, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think, Chris, that, I, I, I love the idea the, behind it, and I think it's very important, and it should definitely be um, worked in. And soon. Yeah. Meeting. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so we're back to the main motion, which is to transfer this money to the U32 capital fund. Um, are we ready for a vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay. Great. Um, Next, do you want to do yeah. Yes. Before we talk, um, the decision to go to quarterly reports, uh, does that mean that we will only get pages like this 
in December? So, uh, my, my understanding, and we're still trying to figure this out, we're a very young committee, a finance committee right now, is at our next, yeah, we have different things in our agenda, so things like what you were talking about, so staffing, uh, trauma for practices, class sizes, programming, student needs, and capital needs, are all in our future bucket mm -hmm. to make sure that our budget is, you know, built with equity uh, around that. So, so it's not, the, the quarterly finance, this, we won't see it until, December, but we are in essence starting our budgeting process now. So this is just like the bigger picture. Right. So you're right, you won't see the, that unless somebody needs to see it. I think what we need to get involved right now is more of a, a hands-on budgeting that will inform that in December. So is there, is there much in terms of producing these reports? Just because it seems like a long time from September to December, and then from December till what, March or April? Um, and to, to not see uh, these reports by the board. What we had done uh, previously was we inserted some of the reports unchanged every month. Okay. So it was the same report you were seeing, it just hadn't had any different numbers. The projections were done. That says this has changed compared to the last, so that there's, right. you know, because it would be unfortunate, I think, to get a report in March that is, or December, that's really different from this. Okay. Um, so this is informed of any changes. Um, this report reflects every employee's salary and benefits rolled up, mm -hmm. and unless they have a life circumstance, they can't change their health insurance. So um, the next time that people can change their health insurance is January. So the reports are, are due to our office by December. So their contracts are in here. Unless something significant happens, this is the projection for the year. All positions are pretty much filled except for long-term subs. So I'm not seeing a lot of variation. The only caveat to that is next month um, we submit a special education spending report that may result in some change, and if so, we would obviously need to update the report. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, because the English language learning position is also dealt with in this report. Uh, we will hold 6.2 up to now. Um, if someone would like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. If I can get yeah. Sure. Right. We, yeah. we currently employ a .5 ELL teacher who serves students across our district. Uh, due to some increase in uh, student needs, uh, we are recommending that this be increased by 0.3, bringing her position to 0.8. Uh, there is a nomination form in the back of your packet on page 19, I think it is, so that you can see the, the total cost. The individual is Michelle Atolfo Murray. Uh, and uh, to uh, working with Kelly and also uh, personally met with Michelle to talk about her caseload and the needs. Uh, the students, our new students are, um, do not have any English language and they require daily support and that's more than we have available based on our FTE in the current position. Uh, she has additional time and we feel that this is necessary for the students. So can we just ask kind of government, the um, nomination form has an increase of $21,022 but the form says 30000 is that a health benefit or something that's the, the differential between those two numbers? Well, it actually is. The 30000 was the next actual maximum that it could be. Um, this is, these are really estimates until, if the individual chooses to come on our health insurance, mm -hmm. then there will be a larger increase. But the 21000 was mm -hmm. the maximum that what her insurance increased. This one's familiar for an employee with us? She is, at a point five. Okay, so the thirty thousand includes they, they benefits. Change. I'm sorry. Uh, the thirty thousand includes benefits like FICA, unemployment workers' fund, okay. and the twenty-one thousand is the salary only. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the confusion. So all together will be thirty thousand. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I will move that we make. A, 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 I'll make a motion for an English a language learner position for a Michelle. Of her to increase 0.3 from her original 0.5 to a 0.8, and the total increase for $30,000. Oh. Unless you don't want to meet that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. 
32. 30,232. Okay. Okay, um, floor moves, Marilyn seconds. Any further discussion of this? It's good? All right. All in favor of the motion to expand our English, the English language, I think I need this, our English language learning position from 0.5 to 0.8 for $30,232, and Michelle Tovel Murray um, doing this. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, approved board orders. I don't know where they are. They're, they're right here, so I have a question about them. Um, I know we got an email about the Callis invoice, and it's included in these, so I wanted clarity. Clarity and discussion about that. Um, there was an invoice from Callis about uh, charges for voting costs, which all towns had voting costs. So um, I and we also got an email from Rosie concerning this as a taxpayer, not as a town clerk. And I wanted to question it, and so I've not seen it because I saw that it was in this board order, right. and I'm uncomfortable with that. Okay. Um, yeah, was in the yeah. um, yesterday, I met with our town clerks to actually our original purpose was to plan ahead for <coughs> future elections and discuss a possible spe special election, which is coming up on the board agenda later, uh, to amend further our articles of agreement. And we had an in-depth discussion about uh, responsibility and amount of funds that um, a district may be responsible for as compared to the town. Now there are, one thing I learned that there are some variations in the way our town clerks are employed. And I'm sure you know this better than I. Some are hourly employees on part-time and others are salaried employees. Uh, so that has an effect. But most importantly, it was noted that last year with the four to five additional elections that were held over the course of the spring primarily, uh, that quite a bit of additional time was devoted by the members. Um, there was a, uh, a mixture of uh, initially of opinion as to how to proceed moving forward, but in the end we did reach consensus for future special elections, we will only be billed for the time of um, the individuals that call BCA <coughs> employees who sit at on the election day to do voter checklists and so on. And those are billed at about uh, minimum wage. So that, uh, if we run a special election only for ourselves, and any postage they would track for absentee ballots that were sent out. Uh, now, I know this isn't something that you've done in the past, but the um, statute does actually put the school district as a municipality in, as a responsible party for paying for additional costs for elections outside of the norm. Uh, this one is, a, is different because it does include time. Um, and um, other than the fact that the individuals in this town are paid on an hourly basis, um, I'm not 100% certain if they would have been paid for these days or not. That's not something I was able to get clarity about yesterday. So I'd be happy to um, discuss it further, um, but I can tell you that this amount of money is, and, and the number of hours that have been incorporated, I think, uh, is, is um, beyond what the other towns would be supportive of or would be agreeable to in the future. Um, the other information that we shared was the fact that the, this board and the policy committee when they meet can develop a policy for the future which would outline the parameters of exactly what expenses we'll pay. But as of now, we don't have guidelines. Uh, so it's really up to the board to determine do you, how you wish to address this particular invoice uh, and also, if you're agreeable to the plan that the town clerks made with me to really narrow those expenses to those that are above and beyond, and in particular at 
special elections. Did you, did you know I'm not on the menu? Catherine had to go from the other panel. Um, no, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, well, but there was expenditures from the other panel. Right. So should we invite all the other towns to submit uh, their expenses as well? I'm not comfortable with that. I think that the, I realize that last year was unusual. You say you've made an agreement with the town press going forward. Was that going forward and thinking we were paying this? For this year, for future special elections. No, this is a decision you should make, of course. I, I, I'm also a BCA person. So um, if I thought, I, I, I'm not going to go there, but to me, I'm volunteering my time. Like you said, it's kind of minimum wage. There's this little check because I'm there that day. But you, in, in, this, I mean, in Minnesota, a lot of DCA folks are not actually the vote people who sit and do the checklist. Those are, are they have other GCA yeah. folks. Who okay, and it's not really we're all BCA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just. I looked at this and I, I kind of felt like the amount of work that went into documenting all this time was, was also hours that were hourly work of the person who was creating the document and I just was very uncomfortable with this and to do it for five towns when it's never been done before and the town clerks, that's just part of the town responsibility. So um, it, it, it just made me uncomfortable because the other towns did not bill, the other towns have not brought it up as, I mean, yes, it was out of the norm to have as many elections as we had, but I wasn't comfortable with it. They also indicated that over years of time there had been no other special election. So it really was an unusual. It was very unusual. So I think I might feel more comfortable in order to establish a process that we're equitable. Mm -hmm. So first have the policy committee talk about what the future policy is. Mm -hmm. And then if if we have, you know, four thousand dollars or you know, if, if we have this amount that it would be Equitably, equitably distribute around the town clerks, to, just for, for the, you know, recognize that there was a cost, and then some people bill and some people didn't bill. But we don't want to start pressing that. You know, we would create some kind of uh, animosity between the town clerks. And I think a policy going forward right. makes sense. That if for some reason we have another year where we're having all these special elections, that there is something to help the town. So, um, would it be helpful if we were to pull this particular item from the board orders on this occasion? And uh, maybe in the finance committee, we could. Um, policy on Monday, also. Policy on Monday. So, yeah. So, um, maybe take a look at this in committees and come back to the board. So, how at that point is the total on this board order amended with that amount um, subtracted? Yes, that would be. And uh, how would we? How would we propose that? Would we? Let me make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion um, that you instruct our office to void that check, and you would change the total in the motion to be without that check. I would like it to be two motions, please, just okay. for the auditor. Otherwise, I'm going to think I did it because. Oh. So, does anybody want to make Lori's first motion to void the check? In how much it is in? It is 37.39. Yeah. 3739 Yeah, I move to we uh, void the amount of $3,739.90 and be payable to the town of Dallas, Mr. Yeah. Be payable to the town of Dallas. Okay. Okay, Chris makes the motion. Marilyn in seconds. Any further discussion for now? Ready for a vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, so we're basically 
putting this on hold for discussion by in committees. Now, we need a motion to approve the board orders for... I'm trying, I'm doing the math real fast right here. Uh, <laughs> No, I did it. Let me see it. Okay. Um, so I'll make the motion that we approve the board orders for the amount, the total amount of two hundred sixty-three thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> floor seconds. Scott moves floor seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, at this juncture, it's 9.15, and I'm wondering um, if the board would agree that our student representatives don't have to be um, tortured any longer than they already have been. Um, I'm sure you're welcome to stay. You're always welcome to stay. But um, you are certainly free to leave unless anybody can share with us. Yeah, uh, before you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I was afraid of that. No. <laughs> Please. Yes. Sure. Uh, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, but this would be a great time. Um, to just to share since we're like the student report that yeah sweet okay all these uh going is on going on to u32 um it was the uh, start of fall sports and uh homecoming is this weekend this game at home today which we missed but tomorrow is white out you guys want to come support the boys team um stage 32 is starting avenue q um for their fall play going to be a show with puppets. There's a little bit of tension with it. That's been the talk around the school. And today, there were a few colleges around the atrium. We had a college fair mm -hmm. for juniors and seniors and anyone else who wanted to stop and talk. Mm -hmm. um, there are the usual, uh, you know, uh, sort of your activities. A lot of clubs are meeting and organizing. Um, today, there was a uh, uh, training for peer mentors. Uh, high schoolers are gonna mentor middle schoolers. Um, and uh, lots of other organizations are getting going. And this Friday we have the climate strike. And hopefully a lot of students will be able to attend this Friday. And YAS, I'm saying it right, YAS, um, is a new group, or a new old group. So it existed before I got to high school. And then in my freshman year, it turned into bridging the gap, but now it's back to being yet. And it's um, there to help bridge the gap between students and teachers and trying to find better ways to communicate and overall the student advocacy. In this and does it stand for something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was fine. <laughs> it's youth and adults transforming schools together. Yes. Youth and adults transforming schools together. Y A T S T. I have a question. Yes. I don't know if there's a not blunt way to say this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're, we're into right. blunt. Okay. Um, this, is a, this is an interesting question. I'm just wondering, um, what would happen if I got arrested? On the climate? Yes, I'm just wondering. Uh, we would bail you out. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> no, we wouldn't, I'm sorry. Your parents would bail you out. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Would bail you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was speaking personally. Yes. Even if they're in your kids' parents. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so are you asking if during the, the your time at the march yes. um, that you if you were arrested for civil disobedience? Yes. 
nothing would happen to you cool. as okay. a result cool. of there's no school action that would be taken unless the only time we take action on any issue that happens off of school grounds yeah. if it is a uh, substantial disruption to the school Got for it. some reason okay i cannot foresee why that would be a substantial yes. disruption to the school cool thanks um, we'll be watching the news. <laughs> and it would also not preclude your involvement in this board mm -hmm. if it weren't a criminal act. Okay. So. Good to know. Yeah. So. I, have, I have a question just because you brought it up. What if he was on a sports team? Would it preclude anything there? So um, involvement in the uh, strike means that they are missing school and according to our handbook policies, Students are not able to participate in any co-curricular activities on the day in which they're absent or on a Saturday if they're absent on a Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, That's, any co That's any co-curricular activity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yes, that has been a discussion at the school. Okay. <laughs> and they're eagerly awaiting my final uh, decision for one of our groups. But I needed to hear some. Good. Um, Anything else, Thomas? <laughs> Anything else got to <laughs> okay. so, so I'd like to offer real quick. So, um, so I met with Towns and Mia super briefly today. Um, but one of the things that we discussed uh, very quickly is that they represent more than U32 um, as students on this board. And so one of our quick discussions was we probably need to have some method of them gathering information from the elementary schools as part of their report, which we'll we'll sit and work on like what that looks like or what we could do and. And, and so help support that because in the past the students represented the, the students on the U32 board but now they have many other students uh, and so we're going to try to figure out how we can get some of that information here as well. Uh, well done. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Good. Um, very good. So uh, let's see. We are now on 5.2, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, annual meeting date, election of district officers, and commingling of budget ballots. Did I have, did I have this something? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So, page 16 is the um, is the printed material. 1617. And Deborah has sort of had the lead on this. Sure, no, no, no. So, as we discussed in our last meeting, we uh, discovered that our annual meeting was scheduled on town meeting day, and we've all agreed, and this is the consensus of our town meeting clerks, as, I'm sorry, our town clerks as well, that that will not work um, because of the fact that they're otherwise engaged in voting. and. Uh, having our Australian ballot votes across the uh, all of our five towns. Um, so, um, so in response to um, the interests of the board and looking at ways to make this change, we discovered a couple of things. Uh, first of all, a special meeting will have to be called so the voters can act on this question of the annual meeting date. And as we discussed in the past meetings as well, uh, there was an interest possibly in changing the way that the district officers are voted on. Right now, they're voted on at your annual meeting, which means that you would call, you would have your, um, everyone who attended would need to be certified as a resident and a voting member in order to vote at your annual meeting to vote on those three officers. Um, in the past, my understanding is U32 has chosen to have those officers voted uh, through Australian ballot on town meeting day. If you want to make that change and utilize the practice you've had in the past, you will have to get board approval to do that, which is what's listed here under Article 2. And the third area um, is the question of how the ballots are going to be counted. Your current articles of agreement call for a commingling of ballots for your school board uh, positions, but not for the budget. So to follow the process we have in place now, technically, we would have to vote, or excuse me, count our ballots for the budget by town, 
report them individually and compile them, and then bring all of the ballots together, commingle them, and determine what the outcome for the election of officers was, the board officers, yourselves, and the new that'll be added. So that obviously is a would be a cumbersome process, and I'm sure it wasn't it was just an oversight, most likely, when you were organizing last spring. Uh, in history, you have commingled your ballots for the U32 budget. Uh, so you have taken all of them together. What commingling means is collect all of the ballots from the towns without counting them and essentially mix them up and then run them through the ballot counter, and you have your result for the entire district. Uh, so if you choose to make that change, it will also require a vote of the electorate. Those are, are two fairly easy and clear, I think, understandable technical corrections. But the question of when you hold your annual meeting uh, is described in the two versions of Article 1 um, on page 16. And um, if you were to choose one of these, it's recommended that um, you choose one that will require that you don't have to vote on it twice. So the second version allows you to make a decision that will be forever your, unless you vote uh, forever the date of your annual meeting. Uh, so it will include both this year and future years. So those are some options. Oh, and one other thing, when I was speaking with our, uh, our administration from U32, our central office staff, and our town clerks, I learned that some time ago, U32 chose not to hold the annual meeting in the official sense, but rather uh, hold an informational meeting. Uh, and they accomplished that because all of the items that were to be voted on were actually done by Australian ballot. So some of the pros of an approach like that is that it, uh, it's often difficult to attract a large number of citizens to the annual meeting, uh, and it, it does sometimes feel as though it's um, a reported event, but perhaps not an interactive event. Uh, however, on, on the positive side, as a new board in a new district, having um, a large opportunity to speak about accomplishments and plans, as well as your budget, uh, activities and exciting successes that we can uh, point to in a formal way on an annual basis is also, I think, has a lot of uh, uh, pluses and, and a lot of opportunities for us to, once again, continue to focus on the collective and our coordinated efforts. Uh, so, those are the decisions before you tonight uh, to have an annual meeting or not, and if so, when. And, uh, and then if you are in favor of uh, the Articles 2 and 3, which were proposed or discussed in a previous meeting. Not much to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Fairly simple, straightforward. But first, let me ask if you have questions about the guidance and the articles that were written. I did, by the way, have these vetted by the board's attorney, uh, who has been advising you on Act 46 and Articles of Agreement over the last few years at school. Yes. Can I ask a question? It, it, just a clarifying question. Yes. So if we decide, I think we talked about this before, if we decide to not have an uh, annual meeting, that doesn't preclude to have an information no, meeting every it year. does not preclude that. So. Mm -hmm. so if there's no voting at all, it's just an informational meeting? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you would have to have approval of the voters to um, use Australian ballot to elect the moderator, clerk, and treasurer. Yeah. So we can have the moderator uh, as an Australian ballot item. Um, they wouldn't be able to preside at a meeting until the next year. No, but I believe that the board had a moderator elected at your last meeting who would qualify for this. Right Wouldn't it have been a moderator? But then moderators, you basically have to moderator this year to preside over the meeting and you're a year later. Right. If you do it by a straight ballot, right? Right, and uh, it's my understanding that in annual meetings you are appointed until such time as a revote occurs. So if that revote is in March, then that, that person who was a moderator, you might have, you might decide to call several special meetings and that moderator could be called upon to oversee that throughout the year. It's typically only once. Uh, but if, but upon a revote or a, you know, 
an individual was selected through our Australian ballot at that point, from that point forward in March, they would be your moderator for the future, for the future year. It's a one-year position, as is the other two. So what would the annual meeting date you anticipating it would be? Uh, the board town meeting? Yes. To, so that it can, so that you can provide information about the budget mm -hmm. and the school activities. But the, the voting by Australian ballot will still be on town meeting. Any town. Mm -hmm. oh, on on uh, Article 1, Version 2, uh, the third line after Saturday, is there, is there a month missing? Like um, the last. Monday through Saturday of March or of February or uh, okay, so the town meeting day is this year, the twenty twenty is March third. It's the first Tuesday, Tuesday in March. So this would be the March third. So this would be March first. You if you say if this is going to be a, um, a decision that applies annually, you can't update. Yeah, you have to say you have to say it's the last Monday in February. Or could you say the Saturday preceding town meeting? Because it could be a March day or a February day. Yeah. So I think you'd have to say either the Monday preceding the town meeting or the Saturday preceding whatever day. Let's keep in mind that that week before town meeting is also a vacation week. Yes. Right. And you are required to hold an informational meeting though within 10 days of town meeting, and that does include mm -hmm. vacation. Yeah. It it's, always indicates. Yeah. yeah. If it's an informational meeting, if we're not voting on anything, the town clerks don't have to be there, correct? Correct. Because I, I know U32 used to have theirs Monday night before town meeting. Right. And you, you couldn't be asking the town clerks to be somewhere on Monday night before because you're setting up the whole vote for the next day. And some of them have informational meetings a few towns, I think, the night before also. So that would be perfect. I know East Montpelier has had Saturday meetings. Saturday meetings, so that in that Don't count on that. Don't count on that? That will probably go away now to a different day if we're not doing a joint one. It was joint with the school. Uh, but yeah, but we were assuming that we would still report on town meeting, but we should talk about that, about how we want to do it. I can't hear you before, I'm sorry. No, sorry. To report that the school board might report on town meeting in the individual towns, but it could not be at all. No, no, but it would be our representative. I don't know. Idea being that town meeting would be dead, you know, right? Right. Because yeah, it's an important part. Of yeah, we'd like you to contact me okay. because it is in play right now as to what we're doing. So another piece of information to share is that um, the town clerks feel that while there is no election on the first Tuesday in November this year, that would be a good day for this meeting to be held or election to be held because people are accustomed to voting on election day rather than selecting another arbitrary day in the fall. But to do so, you would have to act on these articles tonight so that we could have time to have the ballots prepared and everything warranted 30 days prior. Uh, by the 30th of September, I believe, would be the deadline for the way. And for the uh, the absentee ballots in a right. timely manner. Right. Because you can do early voting. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. The, the big difference is that version two is is or it is permanent. Mm -hmm. Well, like, until you voted differently. Yeah. So we voted differently. Mm -hmm. And first one, 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Another Which is another. Right. Another meeting. Yeah. But it could be during a normal, like, town meeting, or it could be during a normal voting cycle. It could be a, a regular ballot. Presidential. Right. Or presidential. presidential. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you want to do? Um, the last Monday. Sunday? No, not the last, the last Monday of February. I think that's a day when a lot of people vacation. Like, uh, school. It has I think to be we're, 10 we're, days where they're supposed to be because that vacation, vacation is always the best. Monday preceding town meeting. That's, that would be what I thought. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and, right. and could we hold an informational meeting before vacation starts? Sure. Yeah, we can hold that meeting. Yeah. 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 Definitely, because that's getting awfully close. And again, with early voting, the beginning of February, people will be voting for budget, so we should be informing people. What, what's the earliest day we can have the hearing? I mean, yeah, it, what, what's 10 days before town meeting day? It's Saturday, it's Saturday the 22nd, Saturday. which is the first day of vacation. Yeah. But 10 days before the Monday before town meeting day, it's Friday, right? But that doesn't count for the voting party. <laughs> 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 and everybody will be on the plane then. The tropics. Most of them. Do we have. Do we have. I think the 10th day prior would be the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just a single part of vacation for people if they travel. Wouldn't be the Friday, I think. The, by the Monday preceding town meeting, just, is that sort of a vague consensus? I'm uh, given that nothing is going to be great. Yeah. You know that. I think Friday's, Friday night's tough. Just tough anyway. Friday night's tough. Friday nights, yeah. yeah. But that, so, so just to be clear, that would mean that we would have to have a quorum to hold an informational meeting during vacation. During our lifetime. Not if we're not making any action. I don't think so. No, you don't have to have a quorum. No. It's just informational. We're not taking action. Okay. We, we never had a quorum. Yeah. <laughs> we never even had a few. You have a problem. You have a quorum for your annual town. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to make a motion to um, adopt version two of Article One and insert uh, the Monday before town meeting where it says insert Monday dash Saturday. Okay, Chris has moved that we adopt version two of Article One, inserting. The uh, deleting last and within the bracket insert so that it was set read thereafter to the Monday before town meeting and then delete everything else within the bracket mm -hmm. to transact, etc. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Can I suggest that we say the Monday before town meeting day? But I suggest that we say the Monday before the first Tuesday in March. Yeah, because some towns have different town meetings. Okay, okay, I like it, I like it. Excellent. Um, still sharp at 9.30. Okay, um, so, uh, belay what I just said, to the Monday, this Monday, is the the Monday before the first Tuesday in March. Thank you. To the Monday before the first Tuesday in March <coughs> to transact any business, etc. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Lindy seconds. Um, do you want to move them all together? Or I think um, if we move them all together, there's just one the question I would have about it. Sorry, I think we should move them individually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there seems to be an issue. Okay, very good. Um, any further discussion? Article 1, version 2. Uh, Bruce. The one problem I have with all of this is if your other two articles are approved, you'll have no purpose in your annual meeting, and you're setting yourself up for uh, always having to oddly warn it and oddly warn your informational meeting. Uh, and I think you, it would be better if you focused on getting the two oopses corrected and at most do this shift for one year. Uh, and test it. Mm -hmm. I, and test, and test it. And yeah, just see how it plays through. Uh, because all of this is happening so quickly. Uh, we saw the errors that crept into the Articles of Agreement because things were going too quickly. This same sort of thing is happening now. And I think you'd be better off doing it as a one-year deal. Because I think you're going to want 
your annual meeting to be on town meeting day and just not hold it is how it's going to play out just like U32 uh, will be the end result. Uh, so. Why can't we do that anyway? Well, you can't hold your annual meeting on because the clerks and the parents are all and they're all and they're and I think our community members are going to be attending meetings in their town, right? We'll be looking to to draw right. people right. We could also we could also do maybe this experiment and decide that it really doesn't work and we should have listened to you in the first place. You can always change it. <laughs> we can always change it. Because we will true. have a November normal election next year that will be very well attended, I have a bit. <laughs> so if it was on that ballot, there would be a lot of people voting. That's when we'll have our end meeting. <laughs> yeah. But but that's an excellent point. Thank you very much. And the, the only other thing I was going to bring this up when you were having the discussion on the, the uh, uh, Callus bill mm -hmm. is please follow through with that policy and get there because uh, that's Callus sh shouldn't be billing that that isn't the protocol that we had developed. None of us want to bill you, but we want something in writing so that we're following the same. Protocol. Yes. The, um, committees, the committees have heard you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. We do have a motion on the table. Um, shall we go with it? Any further discussion? Having heard Bruce's alternative, we can go with it and we can always change it. Yes. So, are you ready? I know everybody's tired. <laughs> but um, shall we? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, all in favor of Article 1, Version 2, as proposed by Jonas, with the uh, modification the Monday before the first Tuesday in March. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, great. So, Article 2, um, clear enough. Any discussion? I'm ready for. I would actually move to strike the moderator from there, and let the moderator be elected by the board. Just because if we move away, so what we're doing, like if we don't have a quorum, right? We don't have a. So you know, we've been going back and forth into more Congress and more people voting for for them. I, I I don't know. I you know I like that meeting that. This is my preference, but that doesn't, it's not what everybody can do. So after this first year, because we just voted in that version two, we may not need a moderator if we go to an informational meeting. Is that true? Well, we're not, we're not, we're, yeah. yeah we're we're still still no, that's why I'm saying it for other stuff. For other stuff. For other stuff, so it would be good to have a moderator. For the yeah. following November, when we have to have a meeting, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a event changes. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with, with having the moderator elected right by Australian talent. Um, did anybody else want to weigh in? I think it allows more people from all five towns to weigh in on the moderator. Mm -hmm. That was good. Other views? Yeah. Should we vote in it then? Yeah. Okay. Make um, a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Yeah. Do you need me to read it? No, she is it, you have it. Yeah, she has a second. Okay. So floor moves. A second? A second. Then these seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Yeah. One opposed. Um, okay, so Article 3. Um, my question about this is really for you, Chris. Does this conflict with our Articles of Agreement on closing schools? Um, I think it does. I, I remember I mean, uh, one where it could have Well, been. I think, yes, it, it would. Just because you're, the town with schools located, um, 
has to be a majority in that town um, of, of voters to support the closure. So you would have to segregate, at least in that vote, you'd have to segregate, segregate the town uh, doors by town. Mm -hmm. So, but, but wouldn't it be, a, a, I thought that when we were looking at the article, it would be a vote of that town, that we wouldn't be. It says it's, that if the uh, mayor, good, yeah, good. Uh, it says that um, in the academic year 2021 and 2022 and after, the new union district board shall not close any school building or cease using the building to provide direct instruction in at least one grade, pre-K through 12, unless first approved by both a majority of the union district board and the voters residing in the town in which the school is located. So there would be a general vote. Yeah, the question would only go on the ballot if the majority of this board decided to. I, I thought there was another article of agreement, and I'm too tired to go look it up now, but where I was really surprised where it said at the election, the town clerks will count mm -hmm. about the ballots, and then the information gets sent to wherever it gets sent to and gets we, we did it just for the for voting for us, but we didn't. We thought we were doing it for both, but the way it reads is just for voting for the elected members, not for the budget. So Article 11 in the okay, is representation on the new Union District Board on and after the annual meeting of 2020, and it only addresses school directors. It says immediately following the meeting of 2020, the Board of School Directors shall be expanded to include five members. This group shall be, uh, additional members will be elected in 2020. And then it goes on to say that the votes of the entire electorate will be counted together, but it's only referencing the Board of School Directors, not the budget, not other public questions. So that's what was omitted. And most um, other articles of agreement, in, when they were initiated, included that, but it was omitted. Uh, in I think the reform articles actually came with the voting by the time it came to us. I don't think we inserted that. Yeah, I think we didn't take it out, but I thought it came as part of the default. It's not, it's not at all addressed now. I don't know what they may have looked like previously, but there was no reference to how the vote was to be taken. In your last warning in June, uh, which I could look up on it's online, we did talk about the vote for the budget scheme individually, mm -hmm. but uh, that is not, that would have to be determined. You, you really need to make a decision moving forward, and you have a problem in that there's two ways in which the votes have to be counted right now, both commingled and individually. Mm -hmm. So you really need to correct that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, that's okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a motion for Article 3? I'll make a motion for Article 3 as written. Rindy moves. Second? I'll second. Floor seconds. But, so we've determined that a vote to close a school is separate. Is separate. Is That's not a political <laughs> question. It's not a, it's a public question. It is a public question. By, but by a vote by an individual town that's involved in this vote. Yes. Not so there's no community. Not, not, not a, it wouldn't be a district wide vote. Right. At least according to whatever. It says a district vote. It says of the, shall the voters of the district vote to require ballots to come in for all elections and public questions. Yeah, he was talking so about that. Right. 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 I, I do think that this is only related right. Oh, my question. I thought that a vote to close a school required both a vote of the town and a majority of the district. No, no. the majority of the us. Board. The, board. Oh, the, board. the majority of the board. Is the board. Yeah, we did have that option. We <coughs> took it out. We said that we as a board needed to be convinced that we wanted to close the school. And then as a double veto the power to the town, it's like we needed to convince you enough or whoever the town was that nice. the school needed to be close and you vote because otherwise if it's not a vote of everybody, you know, Worcester is small, you know, we have more voters. I, have no, more I understand. My understanding, which apparently isn't correct, is that it required a public vote of the entire district, a, a majority of the entire district, nope. and a majority of the towns no, the no, larger no, district. Just, just, just like, we have to have enough information in fact. So this article three is 
asking that the ballots for representatives and the clerk and the treasurer and moderator, those votes be, those ballots be commingled? Okay, yes. The budget is. Yeah, everything. Oh, the budget. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The budget is right That's now, right now the only information that, the only way to address that is in relation to the representatives uh, for the school board, where you said that those should be commingled. The other items were not addressed, and as I said before, it's not. Right now, we would have two different processes. The town clerks agree would be very challenging. And it's not historically what you have done as you looking at U32. Uh, you have always commingled your ballots for the budget vote um, since the school was created, is my understanding. So it's a common practice. For U32? Right. Because that was the only budget that was voted on by all For the individual schools, those were all. So your towns would vote, and they would vote on, they would vote for the school budget, the elementary budget, and then the high school budget, and all of the high school budget questions would be commingled across they all the communities, communities, and then one result was reported. So I'm not in favor of this. Amendment, um, even though it's a clunkier procedure in terms of vote counting. Uh, and the reason I'm not is that um, a lot of folks um, express their opinion from voting on the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having the, at least for a, a certain period of time, seeing where our towns are voting on the budget is a reflection on how they feel things are going. Um, and even though the budget, when they're finally co mingled, will pass. Um, I think it's good to have the pulse on the communities of how they're feeling individually um, as to whether they think it's working for them or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the budget vote will be very helpful. And seeing that um, reflected in the individual town votes and counting by town uh, will keep us informed as opposed to not being informed because we won't know as well. So I'm, I'm going to vote against this because I think it reduces the information that we can actually get uh, in terms of how times feel, yeah. time voters feel. Can we commingle the ballots? You commingle at the end. You have to have all the ballots on separate pieces you, of paper. You, you tally them separately by town. So but for the, the officers, those will be separate. Right. But those with the offices are represented across the district, okay. as is the budget. I think the budget is too. And I, the I budget think is, but I think that's another division. Yeah. I think it's a safety valve because we it worked. The safety valve, or at least the expression of frustration, was evident in this past budget vote. Um, and to ignore that, I think, would maybe do us a service. I, I disagree because okay. I'm thinking of the U32 budget. Yeah. And we came out thinking, you know, it passed or it was close or it didn't pass. I'm even thinking back to the bond vote 20 years ago. And we came at it as one. And what Shawnee was saying earlier is we're representing everybody. And I just feel really strongly that we need to continue doing that. And we get the pulse of our communities through other means, whether it's front porch forum or emails or whatever. But I just feel that that's another Oh, well, so-and-so's town. I, I just feel it's going to cause more division than if it's a close vote or it's a landslide vote or whatever. It's all of us together making that close vote or that landslide. And it trickles down to the students, too, because then it's like everybody's pointing fingers yes. and it's happened before that. So then it'd be, oh, you know, your town voted again to not pass it. But, you know, it's our job to give enough information so that the budget passed but not to point fingers, like, you know, hope, you know, he's my pillar keeps voting the budget down, you know, like, I, I don't know, it creates a really horrible dynamic, which is what we try to get away, and that's why we were not doing that at 832, so we should follow, but there was no way of telling which towns I voted no for it. It's just not good practice, especially as we're starting to be trembling for people. We don't want that. To more stress in our communities that they need. Yeah. Um, if I'm a teacher in one of those schools, I would feel pretty bad if my town didn't support it, but all the other towns did, and it comes out in the news or whatever. I, I just feel like we should all be one in the support of our schools. 
or the not support of our schools. That gives us a good message if the budget isn't passed. And I think historically it's important to point out that your budgets have passed both at the elementary level and U32 for many years. And I'm sorry, I don't know the exact number. Lori? Forever. Forever. <laughs> so, so I think that that's, it's positive that there's been ongoing support of our schools. And we appreciate that. Um, I think there are, both, there are good arguments on both sides of this question. Um, but we, uh, are you ready for a vote on it? For the discussion? No? Okay. So, um, all in favor of Article 3 as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. It carries. All right. That's not necessarily an action, is it? No, Should we no it was put in from the last time, and we, we can table it. Yeah. Table that table. 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 Okay. Table. Consider it table. 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 Yeah. Um, the next one is, is book reflection. I wonder if we might be better to do one more fresh. Yeah. Um, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I know some folks have cheating. Maybe the travel yeah. too is very right. and. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think that's stable this, this really time. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. I, no, I, I, I agree. I think the only comment I have is that we, we have to figure out a way. And I know we have a lot in our, in our, in our plates. Yeah. We just have to figure out a way. Yeah, well, we'll do first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, actually, that's, that's a great idea. idea. First. Thank you. Um, so we're at 5.5 .5 board committees um, to establish the superintendent's search. Um, only search, no rescue. So, <clears throat> do we have any motion to establish the superintendent's search committee with the charge as written out on page 18? Seconds. Thanks. Um, discussion? So it says draft the hiring evaluation criteria. I assume that's by this committee. So yeah. we're making a motion to make a charge? Yeah, I'm trying it's to figure out. Charge, and also what would be nice is to get people on it too. Okay. Um, and I would, I would welcome the chance to serve on this committee. Um, but first, we just have to make a motion for this charge, right? Right. Uh, the motion includes the charge. So the motion is going to include people? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Good point. Good point. No. I thought it was Good. first. It's it's yeah. Okay. okay, let's do them one at a time. So uh, we have a motion to establish the committee with the charge on page 18. Any discussion? You good? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed, good. All right, now, um, personnel. Um, I would be happy to be on it. Um, anybody else? So as we've formed committees before, it's we, pretty much been we just said we're in it, or is it a motion? This yeah. we make members we want. That's, what is the makeup of this committee? I think um, I, I think at a minimum of three board members. Yeah. I assume we're going to have community members, yes. teachers, administrators. That's the and, and, and sort of a bigger formation. But the three will be the what? Um, like the steering. The steering. Yeah. I would suggest. I'm just suggesting at least four, in case because it takes a lot of time and there will be people who can't make it. I don't know if one of them is an alternate or not, but you want them all there. So I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I just am. Oh, sir. Four. President. Four. One, three, plus an alternate? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, no. Or just call it four and hope that you'll always have at least three. I don't know. I just, I know things happen. Oh, no. 
And you can say, yeah, there's, there's different phases, and so there, there will be time when if you're not there, just because you miss things, like going through the interviews and things like that. Uh, but in terms of the formation process, board, okay, I think it would be helpful. So that means if, if you're okay with me being on it, um, we need three more. I volunteer too, so we can. Great. Okay. Okay. If we have three, do I hear four? Okay. Dorothy. Oh, sorry. Dorothy, go ahead. She's. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. So um, we have um, Dorothy, Floor, Chris, and Scott proposed for the committee. And we'd always be welcome in our I'm sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, well, I, I, it isn't an open process usually, is it? Well, so if you're saying that, I'm just in the, in the, bigger, in the bigger formation um, with committee members and I, I would, the, the steering plan, this is the core. Um, I, I guess I was referring to the larger when it's in public and people know who they are, but at the beginning of a search, it's all secret. Who's right, it's like committee, uh, community. Yeah, exactly. I see. Okay, so is that good? Goes for it. Uh, are you ready to vote on that? Okay, all in favor of having Dorothy, Flora, Chris, and myself on the superintendent search committee. Making the motion here, this is going to happen one more until we break up. Um, I will move that Scott, Flora, Chris, and Dorothy comprise the board element of the superintendent search committee. Thank you, Jonas. Do we have a second? I'll second that. George seconds? Great. So, um, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Great. Thank you. Um, we have community budget forum dates. Um, is this something that can be pushed on? Great. Um, representative proxy for Beehive Nisbet? We could probably postpone that as well, but if, or, or if you just would like to have a motion. Essentially, uh, each year in November, when uh, the Superintendent Association and the School Board Association meets, uh, there's an annual meeting of Beehive Nisbet. And normally the board would give the superintendent the ability to, to provide the proxy vote for any action items. Uh, I'm not aware of what those might be, but it has to do with administration of our health care for the school districts in the state of Vermont. And I'd be pleased to be a proxy if you'd be willing to nominate for that. Does anybody want to make a motion to nominate Deborah as a proxy for the behind of Ismet and the Mm -hmm. second. Chris moves, floor seconds. Any further discussion? No? Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No? Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, do we have hires beyond the yep. show? Um, future agenda items uh, remain future. Um, Next steps for board members, Mary Lynn, you're okay with <laughs> writing up this marathon? Yeah, am I sending it to the public? Uh, it doesn't want to take it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, anything else from anybody? Uh, on the board, students? Yeah. Thank you, I, I have to give you real points for endurance. Oh, great. It's more than easy. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, administrators, are we safe travels home everywhere. Um, if there's an objection, I would adjourn by consensus at 10. Oh, oh, oh.